this one. Sorry about that. Folks, my next guest is an actor and comedian who stars in Showtime's Work in Progress. How many people are you sleeping with right now? No one. You're not sleeping with anyone? No. But in seven hours and 30 minutes, I will be sleeping with one. Yeah, you. <laughs> okay. Um, in seven hours and 42 minutes? Is that when we might be exclusive? I mean, w would you ever be exclusive? Can you imagine yourself with me doing that, being exclusive with me? You just don't answer, because I am really about to spiral like a mother. Please welcome Abby McEnany. Hi. Hi. So nice to have you on the show. It's so nice to be here. And I gotta say, I just met Andrew Yang, and he's already making it work. Wow. Yeah. A tenor, I just, a soft I mean, box. he said, you know, for you, I'll give you installments. I'm like, anything works, <laughs> Mr. Yang. So, I don't know, I'm a big fan of his already. Um, <laughs> a, a, we just got out here, and, we, and, and I just want to do one thing for you. Your collars popped out. <gasps> Thank you very much. Just want to let you know. Honestly, it's going to happen a lot, so... Keep on it, Mr. Okay. Colbert. Well, when I when when, uh, when I found out you, you were on the show, yes. Um, first of all, everybody in the building is really excited. Um, we're big fans of of, of your show, Dude. Work in Progress. Oh, thank you. And 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 somebody said to me, "Is like, oh, you might know her because Second City mm -hmm. and Chicago, and she was yeah. around for a long time, and you guys are both fairly close in age." I said, "I, I don't yeah. remember Abby." Yeah. And so I went to speak to a couple of people, and everybody just had the loveliest things to say about you. That not only are you sort of a, you were a fixture of Chicago improv community, but that you're so welcoming, and you want to make oh. sure everybody feels welcome, like when they come into a theater or a community or any situation. Yeah, really? And I found out. <laughs> it was what I was told. That's amazing. It could be a lie. You could I'm, be a horrible I'm sweaty. person. I, I mean, honestly, who knows? I mean, I might, but jury's out. <laughs> and I found out this afternoon yes. that we actually had met before. We had. You were my teacher for level five at Second City. Wow. Yeah. And, uh, and you... <laughs> and this... I taught for a few... I taught there for a yeah. few years. And then this is... Let's see if we got a really close shot of this. Here's, here's me right up there. Yeah. And yeah, I'm there in the L Lane Bryant dress. There you go. Yeah. There you go. Yeah. And just so you know, I'm wearing like really heavy tights and Doc Martens. We all have looks. Um, yeah. Well, um, th th I think this was the last year that I taught. Yeah. Well, and then you had just come off main stage. Yes. And, um, and I believe you had just had your first child, maybe? Yeah. Yeah. And um, they were like, uh, oh, Steve, Stephen Colbert's going to be your teacher. I was like, oh, OK. And, um, and then you were. And then you, uh, we were in the performance class, and we started doing our performances. And then you got the Dana Carvey show. So oh. yeah. So um, Well, I hesitate to ask. Yeah. Is, was, uh, was I an okay, uh, okay teacher? Yeah, you were actually really good. Uh, what else am I going to say? It's my first talk show. Bits. Anyway, so... <laughs> well, the reason I ask... I mean, no, you were amazing. The reason, no, the reason I ask is oh, yeah. because it can, be, like, it can be difficult to teach improv. Honestly, because yeah. Because you're kind of revealing to people sometimes that they already have these abilities, and you're giving them the confidence to do it in some Sure, ways. yeah, and actually, I've never taught, because, like, I... I like, um, and it would have been great if I... I I've never taught or directed or coached because, like, my brain doesn't work like that. Um, uh, I'm not proud, just honest about it. But um, you were a really phenomenal teacher. And you, I, uh, two lessons that um, hopefully I already knew, but, like, you really uh, put into th this old adult brain was, one was, um, you, you know, you were like, you, everybody read, keep up on... Um, you're like, how can we be better? Like, read the news. Like, like you know, keep up on, on, on everything going on and uh -huh. always speak to the highest of your intelligence, even yeah. if you're, you're um, playing an idiot. And so I, and, and, and so I was like, what should we read? And you were like, Noam Chomsky. So I went out and bought two Noam Chomsky books. Oh, Still wow. have them, never read them. Look. <laughs> uh, look. <laughs> that sounds like Noam Chomsky. You guys. That sounds like Chomsky. It took me six years to graduate from college. It, everything's a journey. And then the second one was somebody had like dissed, uh, like put down, uh, we didn't use the word diss back in the early 
60s. Uh, somebody put down a, a comedy show and, and like just had sent, said something and you're like, hey, you know, like don't do that. We're all, you know, we're all doing the best we can. And like sometimes it's a hit, sometimes it's a miss. But like the second you start putting somebody else down who's, who's trying to create stuff, uh, that's a disservice. Uh, I don't know. And so that was a really beautiful thing. Wow. And um, honestly, and I'm I mean, so glad I, I said nice things. I to know. You. That's so I nice. know. And somebody was like, and he's still like that. So that's a testament to you, that's sir. Lovely. Now, I had to leave before your show, I understand. Yeah. So yeah. I never got to give you notes on your performance. That's true. Okay, so I have my old, I have my old notebook here. And wow, I've you gone really through here. You really move with a lot of stuff, huh? I do, yeah. Uh, I have a few notes for Abby Acony. M. I just have oh, Abby M. M. Oh, okay. That, okay. Yeah. Probably you. Okay. <laughs> Uh, they were in another couple here, and they're nothing big. In the bus stop scene, yes. you did with Mike F. Yeah. You originally said you were waiting for the 36 bus, yeah. then later you contradicted that by saying the 22. Right. And the scene was good, and there's some funny stuff there, right. but the audience is paying attention evidently more than you are. That's true. Okay. And so they jump out of the scene, they, it throws them out of the right. scene. Here's the second <laughs> one. Just object work note here. No, I'm sorry, do you have a response? Do you have a response? This no, is a I mean, dialogue. You know, well, you know where like the you can take the 22 and 36 and then at like diversity it splits off. Sure, so of course, maybe yeah. like maybe in my mind it had gone off, but I didn't tell anybody else. Audience didn't know. Honestly, Audience didn't know. And also probably not. I'm just holding on. Okay. Sure, okay. <laughs> this is an object work note here. Oh my god, it's gonna be horrible. I'm horrible. No, tonight. not at all. In the ice cream shop scene. Yeah. Okay, great scooping. Are like, you I, could, serious? I could tell the difference between the vanilla and like the rocky road. Get like out. I could hear the chunk. Oh, I saw it. I saw the whole thing. You know? Okay. I, but I, I really wanted to be clear when I in your performance. I wanted to see how high the counter was because sometimes uh -huh. you were oh. putting the, the thing up here and sometimes yeah. you were putting it down oh, here. Yeah. And again, it pops me out of the scene. Yeah. Okay? Absolutely. I, I'm surprised you were yeah. in it that long. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, honestly, that's a. I mean, I, I thought the, the career highlight of my life was to be on this show. It's that you could tell the difference between yeah, Vanilla yeah. and Rocky Road. I, sh I talk too much. The Spice Girls reference. <laughs> the Spice Girls reference in the mall scene was great. Spice Girls will always be timely. Never stop doing that. Thank you. And my overall note at the bottom of this is I think Abby's talent is probably best utilized on a premium cable series, probably in eight parts, that allows her to vulnerably explore issues of gender, sexuality, and mental health, while at the same time telling a love story that is relatable to everyone regardless of gender identification. Does that resonate with you on any level? <laughs> Says you're ahead of your time, sir. That yes. is that's amazing. Thank you for that. Now the 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 show itself is in somewhat autobiographical. Yeah. But you like you don't have a social media presence. No, you social... don't share yourself. No. Now. Is it odd yeah. to have this sort of confessional show? Well, for sure. I think it's. I mean, it, it could be called hypocritical. Uh, yeah. <laughs> I mean, honestly, I like when I it came from a. I did a storytelling show in 2016 called Work in Progress. Uh, heard of it? Anyway, so at the IO Theater, and in my intro, I was like, I know this is really hypocritical, but I'm a really private person, so whatever I say in here stays in here. And there'd be like, you know, 60 people there, and and then um, and I was like, yeah, I'm still, I like, I I you know, protected myself in that, and then. You know, and then um, my uh, partner, Tim, Tim Mason, and I, we created this pilot. We got into Sundance less than a year ago. I mean, we went to Sundance less than a year ago. And, and then, you know, somebody was like, oh, have you ever thought about making maybe your character not Abby McEnany? And I'm like, you know what? It would have been a good idea. <laughs> <laughs> Too late now. Too late, dog. But yeah, um, I would say, yeah, it's Are weird. there ways in which you're different? Oh, for sure. <laughs> <laughs> How about this? I used to say, I used to do a character with my own name, and then and people would say, are there ways in which they're different? I would say, yeah, but I don't want you to know what those right. are. Right, right, absolutely. I think um, I always say, like, it, it, you know, it's uh, my stock answer. Okay, I've had like three interviews, no big deal. Uh, like, how much is it yourself? And I was like, it depends on time of day and who's asking. Like, so anywhere from 48% to 99. Um, I would say, yeah, and that's sort of a protective thing, right? Like. Yeah. Uh, I, I really hope that the times when Abby, the character, is a really horrible human being, I hope my friends aren't like, yeah, that rings true. I mean, I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> like, oh, wow, yeah. she really nailed the truth on yeah. that. Um, it's also a good way, though, to confess some of the things that you can't say out loud by calling it a character's behavior and not your own. Sure, yeah. And, yeah, that's interesting. I, I don't, I, I'm, I'm interested by the word confess. 
What? I'm interested by the use of the word confess. What I mean is that there, uh, again, I'll only speak from my own experience, yeah. there were things that I would do in character. Oh, for sure, that yes. That were indulging sort yes. of appetites that I wouldn't as a person, but that I know are within me. For sure. That egotistical yeah, yeah. Uh, way. I got to ride <laughs> on the horse of the character and pretend it wasn't me. English Scary. or Western style? English. Yeah, okay, English. me too. English, yeah. But actually, and that's like, you guys, six years of college, that's why I didn't understand. So thanks for interesting. Sure, sure, yeah. Uh, yeah. Well, I think that's that you true. You can say things as character that you can't Absolutely. say Absolutely, like, I would never do that. Well, <laughs> you know. Right. <laughs> you've, got, you've got a couple of interesting characters in here, people playing themselves. Yes. Weird Al. Yes. And Julia Sweeney. Yes. Okay. Who are a couple. In, in the show, yeah. Right, I know, yes, not, yeah. In, not in reality. <laughs> people are like, I had to Google it. Yes. How did that... How did that come about? Well, Julie, so um, the character Pat. Uh, sure, from uh, SNL from back SNL, in the day. From yeah. SNL, right, back in the day. Um, so one of the stories in my storytelling show was how Pat ruined my life because um, people took that character and, and used it as like hatred and bigotry towards me and how I presented myself. And, and like we show it, we showed in the show that it happened with some fratty guys, mm -hmm. but it happened like a lesbian in a lesbian car, a lesbian in a lesbian bar called me Pat. And it's just like, you know, where do I feel safe and stuff? So, so really, Julius Sweeney did not ruin my life. Pat did not ruin my life. I think the ease, the ease that some people take things and they say, oh, I can, be, I can use this to be hateful or bigot, bigoted or something like that, that ruined it. Um, but anyway, Julius Sweeney was like living in Chicago in the North Shore at the time and we kind of wrote her in and then we, like, we, we got our money together because we like, self-funded it and Tim was like, well, I guess it's time to call her. I'm like, oh, I guess. And uh, she, she was like, of course, I'll do anything. She's a dream. And um, yeah, so she did the pilot. Uh, she got paid $125 like everybody else, and uh, she moved to LA, back to LA the next day. And then when we finally, we actually got picked up by Showtime, uh, still, what? And um, yeah. when we were yeah, like, yeah. we, you know, in the pilot, like she invites me and um, uh, my date over to dinner. And so uh, I was like, wouldn't it be funny if we have another celebrity play a heightened version of themselves? And so reach out to Weird Al, he's like, okay. And he's a dream, and I only met him that day. He's a lovely fellow. Holy smokes, man. And he came out, he came out, and I was like, who's that man with the short hair? I'm like, that's Weird Al. Um, <laughs> it's kind of bonkers. It's kind of bonkers. It's and he's weird. a dream. I mean, it's weird, yeah. Yeah, Weird Al, classic. Um, <laughs> I know, too much. I know. No. Rink. Okay. Not nearly enough. Okay. Not nearly enough. Uh, we we got to go here for uh, okay. a minute. We've probably already gone too long already. <laughs> Hard to believe. No. <laughs> Put it online or something like that. So I said, no, do I? No, this is delightful. You okay. don't understand. This is very pleasurable. Okay. Uh, well, let me ask you, who, who was, like, your inspiration for comedy? Like, who, when you were younger, like, uh, that's somebody I want to be right. like? I think um, comedy is something like, um, for me, I think it's actually been a lifesaver. You know, mm. I... Uh, sure, but, back at you. Yeah, right? And then I think um, Steve Martin was a very important person and um, hero to me in it, comedically um, and actually really helped me and my father. My father and I were, uh, our family, you know, like families go through hard times and, and we were um, together and we went to the record store and bought two, it, we, they were on cassettes at the time. Mm -hmm. Boo. But anyways, but they, we had them on LPs, but we, we didn't have a different. And then we went and we sat and we like, <laughs> we listened to these like these these Steve Martin things, and uh, it was just, and we just we were silent. I think I was in like fifth grade, mm -hmm. and there were some and like you could be with each other. Yeah, and like really, and he's an amazingly hilarious person, and. Um, and we just, and also there were some drug references I, I didn't get, maybe still don't, but anyways, but I, you know, but we like shared this thing and it was very healing, you know, and I, mm -hmm. I so Steve Martin just holds a place in my heart and my, my brain. And well, I, I have no doubt that you're doing that for other people right now dude, out there who need it. So thank you so much dude, it's for your work honor. and thank you for being here. Thank you. Work in Progress airs Sundays on Showtime. Abby McEnany, everybody. We'll be right back.